given to us by the divine envoys Teddy Riley and Bernard Bell, New Jack Swing is oh my god i love that genre hard hitting drums and the smoothest of chord progressions and the most divine of voices oh my god and i can't wait to break down the beat that i made let's go I mean, what can a brother say about New Jack Swing that hasn't been said already? It is this amazing biblical combination of R&B, hip-hop, jazz, funk, soul, gospel, dance, pop, electro, rhythm, anything blended together. And in this video, I get the privilege of breaking down a beat that I made in that style using a drum kit that I found on the interwebs and the Korg M1. All right, beautiful folks, welcome to the Danger Room, and I'm happy to have y'all here. It's a beautiful day to break down this new Jack Swing beat. As you can see, I'm using at least seven instances of the Korg N1 divided over an electric piano, bass guitar, two bass guitars, a muted guitar, playing a little bit of plucks, of course, pluck keys, strings, and horns, of course. All right, beautiful folks, let's get the chord progression out of the way. First, we are rocking in the key of G minor. This guy's a fucking idiot. We're in G major not minor. And our first chord is a C major ninth chord right here, which is a chord built on the fourth degree uh, in the scale of G major. We're dropping down to our chord on our third degree, which is actually supposed to be a B minor seven, of course, if I were to construct the chord. However, I took the third, pitched it up one semitone, turning it into a dominant chord like that. So after that, I goes to this, well, it depends on how you read it, but here I actually have a B augmented seventh chord right here however i took the um the raised fifth dropped it down an octave so i'm playing the g in the bass as well so that's basically my regular chord and if you if i were to remove this i would simply have the same chord so that's why it constitutes as a b augmented seventh chord simply based on you know octaves and shit like that so the chord that comes after that is just a regular B minor 7 chord. So I'm relying heavily on that third degree. I just keep repeating it, keep varying it. You know, here I have a dominant. Here's my augmented. Here's my uh, uh, minor 7 chord, of course. I took the fifth, you know, the F sharp, have it in the bass like that. I drop down to my sixth degree, which is an E7 sus4 chord. And I go back once again to that B minor 7 chord if I were to remove this E right here. So it's like that. Now having the chord progression down allows us to talk about the sound selection. I'm using the Korg M1 exclusively, uh, mostly because I do want to uh, you know, get that authentic sound from the early 90s. So I'm using the E piano mix pad right here. Uh, it is under the uh, keyboard tab. Thank you, it's under the keyboard tab. And I love the absolute quintessential dreamy E piano sound that I got from it, which sounds like this. Perfect. Amazing. Now, it made sense for me to want to supplement that with some kind of pad or strings. I went for a pad, which sounds stringy, which is a good middle ground for me. It's the Hyper Pad patch in the Korg M1, which sounds like this. And that's how you kind of already get a very contemporary early 90s groove with, this, with, the, with the very bright keys and the very bright sounding strings. So I decided to move into the drums. So I started gathering uh, a couple of drums. Now I, I have this, I call it the NJS drum kits, but I got this off of a Google Drive. I'll provide the link in the first comment underneath the video. Uh, but that's basically a, a collection of drum sounds which are probably taken from drum machines and sample CDs which probably also have them from drum machines and synthesizers and there are a couple of folders which are so abundant with classic new jack swing drum samples so this is the kind of drum groove that I was experimenting with
and I immediately loved it. Now I made a conscious choice for that snare because my favorite new jack swing uh, joints are the ones that have that super beefy hard hitting snare. Now Bell Biff DeVoe has a, a, you know, that this snare is a little less hard hitting, a little less in your face, a little less abundant with transients in the midsection, but it's a dope snare. But I base my preference of new jack swing off of songs like My Prerogative, produced by Teddy Riley himself, you know, and sung by Bobby Brown. So that's where my choice for this snare comes from. Okay, so after adding the drums, your boy got a little bit of his confidence back. I started feeling a little bit sturdy. So that's when I really started going to work. First thing I did, I took out a bass patch, which is basically just this particular patch, the bass brass patch under the bass tab. And I played a kind of a plucked, stuttery, syncopated bass pattern, which goes like this. Immediately after that, you know, sometimes you produce and you start hearing things that are a perfect fit for your beat. So I took out another instance of the M1, not this one, but also this one, uh, because I was hearing kind of like a muted guitar playing plucks in the same vein. So that's how I got to this little pattern right here. just like that. So at this point, I was feeling like Hannibal in the A-Team and I was watching my plan come together. Now, I just wanna touch on, on this little snare right here. So if you've listened to New Jack Swing, that you you know they're big on rhythm, they're big on syncopation, they're big on the in-betweens. And it's important to have a multitude of snares or toms or other percussions, percussions to use as in-betweens, to use as fills in-between, to fill up the gap. Now there are plenty of new jack swing songs which are just kick snare kick, kick snare you know using those rhythms but you add your little perks in between sprinkle syncopated you know with a little bit of swing because it is new jack swing and you get something so amazing so that's why i started using this snare of course but that's also why i have a multitude of patterns featuring toms which sound like this Okay, so let's take a quick gander at the following. So I added a second kick because I like the idea of just having uh, a layered kick to really lay down the accent. And then you have the kick playing uh, a couple, there's a couple of kicks right here. Um, I thought it was cool to alternate. So basically on the first beat of the bar, you're gonna hear you know the punch of both kicks. And then on the in-between, you're just gonna hear one kick. Also, I added a very basic hi-hat pattern, which is also layered. I have a hi-hat playing this. And it made sense to me to want to layer that with kind of a tambourine. So you get kind of like an accent, which is super cool. Now, I'm gonna tell you a secret. Brass in beats has always sounded cheap to me. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's the quality of the samples or anything. So I was super hesitant. But I needed something to lead into um, basically my beat. I needed an intro. I needed a transition. And I thought maybe there's cool transition effects. Maybe there's cool hits. But I found this dope horn patch. Basically just a brass drum uh, patch underneath. Underneath. Drum slash hits. And... You know, I paid, played like a little, well, you know what? Just check it out. It really works. And I combined that with a dope tom fill. And that's essentially just everything leading into my big um, drop. Now, beautiful people, this is still the late 80s slash early 90s slash mid 90s. So that means that we cannot sleep without having put down a bridge. So that's exactly what I did right around here. I've got my bridge and it sounds like this.
And that's the breakdown, beautiful people. Now, the last tip that I want to give you is that in my experience, having made this beat, it's easy to make it sound like New Jack Swing, but the challenge lies in making it feel like New Jack Swing. And that's when you really have to start paying attention to all the intricate details in your drum beat, in your rhythm. You got to give it that real swing feeling. And that's important. That defines New Jack Swing. It's easy to collect the drum samples, put on a, a, a basic drum beat and then say I made New Jack Swing. But in order to achieve that feeling, there is just so much more that comes to that. But I'm sure you'll be able to figure that out the way I figured it out by just going out there and experimenting. I'm dropping the link to the drum kit in the comments, of course, so y'all can just get your own new Jack Swing on. I hope at the very least y'all enjoyed this video, and if you did, like, share, and subscribe. You'll have noticed there's no real talk about music theory in this video except for just the, the core degrees and all that. If you want more information about, you know, that music theory, I've got a couple more videos on my channel. I invite y'all to check those out, and I hope that you'll benefit from them. With that being said, beautiful folks, I'm going to leave y'all with that, and I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Peace.